folks, we thank you for joining us once again for more NCAA 2K20, and what an episode we have in store for you. North Carolina will try to keep their ACC hopes alive against a surging Syracuse Orange team. In prime time, Florida and Tennessee battle for first place in the SEC, but let's get to our opener as Texas Tech tries to get back on track against a hot Kansas Jayhawks team that has just one loss in their last six games. But first... NCAA 2K20 on GA Sports is brought to you by Derek's NCAA 2020-2021 rosters. These are the most authentic college basketball rosters ever produced, featuring true-to-life player faces, ratings, and tendencies, as well as fully customized teams, coaches, and lineups. Check out the Patreon featured in the description so you can get the roster when it drops, plus monthly updates. Come be a part of the most ambitious project in sports gaming by clicking the link in the description. Welcome to Lubbock, Texas, where we have the first place team in the Big 12 in action, Kansas Jayhawks, visiting here to Texas Tech, who early on looked like they were going to be a top five team basically for the rest of the season, but they caught a pretty tough run of form uh, in the middle of conference play, so they're just trying to claw their way back in, and that's a good way to start here against the first place team. Kansas, either way, will be leaving Texas uh, first place in the Big 12. The question is, can Texas Tech get themselves into second place as Kansas State grabbed a win earlier? So Kansas State at 4-3 and three in conference, Texas Tech at 3-3. Three and three. So this is everything on the line here for Texas Tech. In my opinion, this Kansas team may be number one, but I think you put these two teams head-to-head -head here, and I think Azubuki is maybe the only player I would take positionally that's better than the, the centers here on Texas Tech. I, I think I take every single player on Texas Tech against the starters, I'm talking. Mm -hmm. um, I take all the starters in any position other than center over these KU players, interestingly enough. Uh, I just think they're that good. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, you know, the the only one that I think there could be an argument for is, uh, is Devon Dotson over David Moretti. Uh, sure. But certainly... Well, Moretti, do Moretti doesn't even start. Moretti doesn't even start. Oh, does it? Oh, okay. Never mind then. No. No, Moretti's a bench player. Okay. All right. All right. But James certainly... James Ramsey's a starter. Oh, you're right. Okay, then, yeah, I think... I, I would agree with that, then. Uh, speaking of blowing somebody out of the water, Duke picks up yet another Ooh. win. They hold Virginia to 38 points. 60-38 to 38 to win that. over the Cavs. Absolutely ridiculous. And then uh, the number one team in the country, Memphis, they pick up a win as well, Over although uh, theirs was not so simple. Uh, Memphis holds on to beat Nova by one. Mm. So they stay undefeated, but certainly for the second straight game, Memphis has had a scare from a non-Power 5 conference opponent. And that and that, that that isn't that tough non power five conference there as well, you know. That that conference is stacked with teams, so mm -hmm. not surprised that there is a close game in there either, you know. Very ironically, probably the last thing that I would have expected, the non power five conference is pretty much over at this point. Because of scores today, three non power five teams have been eliminated from conference contention. Those being <laughs> Villanova, CSU, and Gonzaga. Because CSU beat That's Gonzaga. Crazy. So all three teams are mathematically eliminated. So they're just fighting for at-large bids at this point. Um, so you're talking about a conference where we th we thought that they had – it was probably the deep deepest conference from top to bottom, and it's pretty much over at this point. Yeah, when you look at Texas Tech's results from the middle of that conference season, weeks three to five, three losses to Kansas, Kansas State, and West Virginia, and – Offensively, Texas Tech was just not there. They were not showing up. They weren't shooting well. You're talking about maybe the best shooting team in the country. And they just well, they weren't yeah. shooting at that time. They, they put up 42 against Kansas, 58 against Kansas State, 61 against West Virginia. I mean, this is just not what you expect from Texas Tech. But it seems like they've gotten back on track offensively. So a little bump in the road there for the Red Raiders. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the issue with these shooting teams, and you see it throughout history, is you know when a shooting team's not actually shooting and performing, they tend to lose games. So, Put it up. Azubuki! Oh! <laughs> two, 
two of my shorter guys could not stop that there. <laughs> they got to they got to play defense. They have got to lock down here on the defensive end. I mean, there's no question. Kansas can score, but you know, like we've said many times, if you're chasing Texas Tech, you are in a bad position. That's a good way to do it. Although Azubuki just almost gave up that rebound. Yeah, Nobody he, there. he, he really for three. Good lord. But this is this is Tech now slowing the game down, playing a little bit of game management here. Yep, Garrett oh, got him up. Good. Marcus Garrett. No good drive. way. Wow. Yep, that's a good timeout by Coach. Kansas has clawed their way back into the game, and now Tech. Uh, they could do some points on this possession. Moving screen. No. Ooh. Really? <laughs> really, game. His feet Man, were set. My player went in him, didn't you see? His feet were set. That's not my fault that the <laughs> animation glitched and your player went in me. <laughs> That's not my fault. <laughs> Braun for three from the corner. No. In front nope. in front of the bench, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, needs to foul there. Uh, certainly a big win for the Red Raiders right now. And uh, Texas Tech moves into a tie with Kansas State for second place in the Big 12. And as far as Kansas goes, uh, they still have to play Kansas State again. That's coming in week nine of conference play. So... Uh, Big 12 certainly wide open right now, but let's get to a team whose conference hopes could be just about finished. North Carolina has been struggling a lot in ACC play. They're up next against Syracuse. Game two is pretty much do or die for North Carolina right now. A team that was ranked in the top five coming into conference play, but has gone two and four in the ACC. And so uh, for them right now, if they don't if they don't get a win here, it could be all over. Uh, at least in terms of getting an automatic bid. And Syracuse is a team that, on the other side, they are about as motivated as anyone to get a win here because obviously Duke sits in first place in the ACC. We'll show you the standings right now. Duke sits in first place, and so you've got essentially two or three teams battling for one spot one automatic qualifier spot so mm -hmm. this game means a ton to both teams and i don't know what the hell that was they've okay. kind of gone on under the radar a little bit and you know i, I don't want to say that they've been beating the uh i, I don't want to use the word easy but you know when you look at their two losses in conference it's north carolina and duke so syracuse has been beating the teams <laughs> that they're expected to another bad outlet pass um and uh, this this is this is their chance to show the country and to show uh, presumably the selection committee when it comes to seating <laughs> that uh, that they are for real that they can play with the big boys. Those teams, but to make it into the tournament or to get you know the selection committee's heads turned a little bit, you need to beat a North Carolina, a Duke. Uh, you know, you need to beat those teams in your conference that are above you, or at least you get are, something from them. You are absolutely right about that. You are absolutely right. And so this is as good. Oh, come on. Did you just. No, oh, oh. four point play. <laughs> oh, what? Plot tech. Unreal. Oh. North Carolina is still sitting at 7 5. So even if they're mathematically eliminated from the tournament uh, in terms of qualifying from the conference, it's very possible that even then they could get an at large bid. Because I think mm -hmm. when, when it's all said and done, there are actually going to be relatively few teams that have winning records. That's a great finish. There are going to be few teams that have Miller. winning records that don't automatically qualify for the tournament. So I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I can't move. <laughs> Why did he, he just bounce it off his face? Hughes for three. Oh, no. That's Bang. disgusting. No. That is a broken play. That is gross. <laughs> uh, and Buddy almost threw the ball away. Oh nice steal. my! It Braswell. is slap. It is Ugh. slap dick basketball right here to end the quarter. <laughs> it absolutely goes straight to the chest. I can't even make a rebound. layup. All right, Dolazai. Dolazai driving. Nice. Dolazai cross him up. Dolazai no, cross, cross him up. up. Pull up, Jay. There's no way. <laughs> this is an absolute travesty. 
That, that <laughs> last third minute right and a half was awful. And we are sorry <laughs> that anyone ever had to watch that. <laughs> Including our own eyes. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like I know less about basketball now because I just watched that. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to rant about this again. You're going up against North Carolina. Christian Keeling is maybe the best shooter in the country right now in terms of his three-point shooting. And Syracuse is so stubborn that they cannot switch out of a 2-3 zone against one of the best three-point shooters in the country. This, this has always annoyed me with Syracuse because they've had such great players throughout the years and they shoot themselves in the foot with this garbage defense that they never switch out of for any reason even though it's terrible against teams that can shoot. He just flew 10 feet out of bounds! Wow, Cole Anthony. No way. No way. There's three guys around him. Now I know how you feel when you, when I play yes. with Memphis or something. That, that's, all, that's why I'm laughing because it's totally, that's totally what happened. Oh, oh my the God. Wheel, Cole the Anthony. Off the, bus. the wheels Jeez. are off the bus then, at this point. I honestly hope that North Carolina makes a tournament because when they're playing well, they are, to me, the best defensive team in the country, and I don't think it's close. So I, I want to see them make the tournament. A team like this I deserves actually, to make the tournament. Well, you know what, folks? We have a bit of breaking news right now. Not just that North Carolina has won this game. Let's take a look right before this game ends at Cassius Winston of Michigan State because this man right now is almost single-handedly pulling Michigan State back into a position to make the NCAA tournament. Down by one, Winston pulls up for the jump shot to beat Ohio State 64-63. Michigan State has won again, and they are in sole possession of second place in the Big Ten right now. What a story is Michigan State. Prime time here from Tennessee as we have a battle for first place in the SEC. Winner of this will tie Kentucky for that top spot in the Southeastern Conference. But I want to talk, before we really get into this matchup, I want to talk about Michigan State because their game ended right at the end of our last matchup. So we didn't really have time to talk about it. But Michigan State, now with a buzzer beater over Ohio State, we'll show you the Big Ten standings. They sit in second place, and they pretty much control their own destiny to make the tournament, which you're talking about a team that started, what, 0-8, I think they were, to start <laughs> the season? 0-9. Oh, like, no, no, 0-8. Oh, you're right, 0-8. Oh, because they're five and eight now, I think. Yeah, yeah. So they they started zero and eight, and now they won five in a row. I mean, this is unbelievable. And they played Purdue in the last uh, week of of conference play. So this is just like this. You can't write this stuff. Well, they had such a tough strength of schedule, mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. now in conference they come and play some of the teams in conference that weren't as tough as their strength of schedule. They're battle tested. They're out here. They're ready. They're ready to take it on. They're going to be a tournament team, in my opinion. I would not have said uh, that with their 0 and 8 start, but they are going to be a tournament team. <laughs> to get to this <laughs> no matchup, defense. after talking about Michigan State for a little while, uh, this matchup is just as important for the tournament race because of how close the SEC is. So you have Kentucky sitting at 5 and 2 in conference. They're in first place. The winner of this game will go to 5 and 2 to tie the Wildcats for first place. Um, Tennessee, should they win, plays Kentucky next week. Mm -hmm. So that'll be a, a decider for first place in the conference. If Florida wins, they play Kentucky in the last week of conference play. So everything to play for still in the SEC right now. See, the shot. SEC is not the only conference that, of course, is in just complete turmoil right now. The Pac-12... Uh, Obviously, UCLA and USC, the way that they're playing, they seem to have locked up the top two spots. But, you know, in the Pac-12, anything can happen. We know that. And mm -hmm. all all six Pac-12 teams are in action right now. They all started at the same time. So uh, we'll keep you updated on those scores. But we sure can tell thing. you right now, UCLA is ahead. USC and Washington are tied at the half. So oh, Eves Pons is not out here. Um, and I didn't see him on the injury report, but maybe he, maybe he sustained an injury uh, in warm-up to this game, because he has not been in the in the game yet, and that's certainly a big loss for Tennessee. Wow! You yeah. bet wow. I threw on my Florida Gators hat for this game. You bet I did. <laughs> Come on! I didn't ask, but thanks for telling me. 
You bet. That's how that's how that's how much we're feeling ourselves right now. Well, we wanted to wait until all Pac-12 games were finished, but we can give you a score update on the entire Pac-12 conference. First of all, UCLA stays in first place. Big win over Oregon, 65-58 is final. Tiger Campbell, 19 points in that game. So UCLA moves to 6-1 in conference. Meanwhile, their fiercest rival, both in terms of the standings and in terms of, you know, just in general, uh, USC goes down. Washington beats them 61-60. Quade Green, 17 points in that one. So UCLA now is in sole control of first place in the Pac-12 and they control their own destiny as well. They, of course, play USC in the final week of conference play. And finally, Arizona takes down Arizona State. That sends the Wildcats to one game back of second place USC. So what are your thoughts on the Pac-12 right now? Oh, man. It's it's actually kind of tight. <laughs> <You> know, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, even last week it didn't look like it was going to be. No, and now it's kind of turned into, I think UCLA will comfortably clinch. Um, but for that second place spot, you know, I think Oregon has a fighting chance. I think Arizona has a fighting chance. And I think um, USC has a fighting chance. So, Scotty Lewis. Um, I think, yeah, there, I think there's a few teams that could really fight for it. So I think that's something that's going to be really interesting to watch this next couple of weeks here, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. That uh, I mean, let's let's take a look at some of the games coming up for these teams. So, like I said, UCLA USC will face off in the final game of conference season. Before then, UCLA takes on Arizona State and Washington at home. So, uh, certainly UCLA loving their prospects right now going forward against the bottom two teams in the conference. USC has to play Oregon and then Arizona in their next two games. So USC has to face two teams that are going to be clawing to get to that second place spot that mm -hmm. USC currently occupy. Tennessee. And then oh you want to talk God. about it's making too, a statement. It's too easy right now is what's going on. It's way too easy for them right now. They're up by, what is this, 18? If my math is, quick math is 16 now? Yeah. 16 now today if they play like this every single game they have a legitimate shot at going far in the tournament uh, I think you're probably right about that and they certainly have a legitimate shot to win the SEC Florida has to go on the road to Mississippi State next week then they play LSU and that leads up to a final clash with the Kentucky Wildcats in the final week of conference so we got two conferences SEC and Pac-12 are wide wide open right now and of course Duke and Memphis still out there undefeated. There are so many stories to get to with just three games remaining for every team here in NCAA 2K20. You will not want to miss a second of action, so make sure you subscribe so you can see it all. We appreciate you.